universal basic income, UBI, everyone's talking about it these days, right? Especially with all the like anxiety around automation and jobs and all that. Giving everyone a paycheck, no strings attached. Sounds kind of radical, maybe. Definitely a hot topic. But get this, the idea itself, way older than you might think. We're talking centuries old. Get ready for some serious, didn't see that coming moments as we dig into UBI, where it came from and where it might be taking us. It really is fascinating how an idea that feels so modern actually has these deep, deep roots in philosophy. Right. Like prepping for this, I found myself reading these philosophers I never thought I'd connect to UBI, but they were already wrestling with these ideas. Thomas More, for example, back in 1516, he writes Utopia. In Utopia, it wasn't just some, you know, made up fantasy land. More was dealing with real social issues of his time. He saw this form of basic income as a way to actually prevent crime because it prevents the poverty that leads to crime. So tackling the root cause instead of just like reacting after the fact. Exactly. If people's basic needs are met, the thinking goes, they're less desperate less likely to steal to survive. It raises the question, what do we owe each other fundamentally? It makes you think, is it enough to just punish crime or do we have a responsibility to create a society where people don't need to commit it in the first place? Big questions, for sure. And get this, another historical heavyweight I never would have pegged for a UBI connection, Thomas Paine. You know, the common sense American Revolution guy? Thomas Paine. And basic income, what's the link? It's about land ownership, actually. Paine's argument was that Natural resources, things like land, they inherently belong to everyone. From birth, you've got a stake. So people who own land, they should pay taxes on it, obviously, but those taxes, they'd get redistributed to so, everyone yeah. as a form of basic income. Interesting. So it's less about a handout, more about acknowledging everyone has a share in these resources. Right. Which like connects to so much we talk about today with wealth inequality and all that. It highlights how these debates, they aren't just about economics, they're about values. What makes a just society? What do we owe one another? Stuff people have been arguing about forever. It's wild to see these threads going back so far. But how did we get from, like, philosophers pondering this stuff to actual attempts at making it real? The 20th century is where it gets really interesting. The world goes through some serious upheaval, the Great Depression, World War II. Countries had to figure out how to support their citizens. A lot of those safety nets we take for granted now, they came out of that era. The welfare state trying to prevent people from falling through the cracks. But like any big system, people started asking, is this the best way to do it? Cue the economists. And one name that popped up for me, kind of surprisingly, was John Maynard Keynes. Keynes, a giant in economics. Right. And he was already thinking about automation way back then. The impact on jobs, yeah. way ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. Keynes didn't like explicitly endorse UBI as we talk about it now, but his work on employment hinted at it. He saw that technology could replace jobs, and he knew we need ways to make sure everyone benefits from those advances, not just the people whose jobs are, like, automation-proof. Mind-blowing how prescient he was. Okay, but get this. The source material also mentions Milton Friedman, Mr. Free Market himself. In the context of UBI, how does that work? It does seem counterintuitive. Friedman, less government, right. But mm. he actually supported a version of UBI called the negative income tax. The what now? Basically, it's a system where if you earn below a certain amount, the government pays you instead of the other way around. Friedman's reasoning was all about efficiency, though. Mm -hmm. Less bureaucracy, get help directly to people who need it. That was his thing. So even a free market guy saw potential in some form of guaranteed income. It really makes you think about all the different angles on this. But let's talk about the core of it. Why are people so passionate about UBI? It's not just, hey, free money. Definitely not. Hmm. The source material lays out all these arguments for UBI. Preventing poverty is just the start. It's about dignity. It's about boosting creativity because hmm. you're not constantly stressed about money. And, yeah, it's about figuring out how work will function in the future with less of it, thanks to robots. So many angles. But maybe let's start with that dignity argument. What does that even mean when we talk about UBI? Okay, think about it. Traditional welfare, right? You got to prove you deserve help, which can be dehumanizing. UBI says you have worth just by existing, so you deserve a basic standard of living, full stop. Changes the whole narrative. Empowers people, instead of making them justify their need for support. Powerful stuff. Instead of seeing people as, like, charity cases, you're recognizing their right to a decent life. It's a fascinating concept, but how do you actually put it into practice? There have been places that have experimented with UBI, right? And the results are pretty interesting. From Alaska to Finland, Kenya, Namibia, 
Lots of experiments, lots of data to unpack. Let's start with Alaska. They've got this unique program where they share oil revenue with residents. Alaska, huh? It's not just about breathtaking scenery, I guess. So this oil revenue thing, how's it work? It's not exactly UBI as we usually talk about it, but it's got to be close. Yeah, it's called the Alaska Permanent Fund. Mm -hmm. That's pretty unique. Basically, back in 82, they set up this system where a chunk of the state's oil money, it gets paid out mm -hmm. every year to every resident. Hold on. So every Alaskan gets a yearly bonus just for, like, existing. Where do I sign up? But seriously, beyond the whole free money thing, what's the impact been? Well, the fact that it's still around after 40 years, that tells you something right there. Right. Hard to argue with something that's lasted that long. It's politically popular, clearly, even in a place known for being independent. People like the idea. As for the economics, there's research suggesting it's helped with income inequality in the state. Makes sense. That little extra cushion could make a big difference for some folks. But let's hop over to Europe for a sec. Finland, they did that UBI experiment a while back that got everyone talking. What was the deal there? Finland's experiment was interesting because it was a developed country, mm -hmm. right? And they specifically gave this basic income to unemployed people, totally random selection, and then they saw what happened. Okay, cut to the chase. Did everyone just, like, quit their jobs and chill? That's what the critics always say will happen. Nope, actually, that's not what they found. People still wanted to work, even with the basic income. Huh, so much for that argument. What about, like, how happy people were? Did that change? That's where it gets really interesting. People getting the basic income. They were less stressed, less anxious, less depressed. Well, yeah, if you know you've got that safety net, it's got to take a load off, right? Right. It gives you breathing room. Maybe you look for a better job or go back to school or just take care of your family without that constant money panic. It's like, instead of being trapped by your circumstances, you've got options. The Finland thing wasn't perfect, obviously. Every study has its limits. But it suggests UBI can impact more than just your bank account. It's about well-being, you know? Being able to function, take care of yourself, make better choices. That makes a lot of sense. So we've got Alaska. We've got Finland. The source material also mentioned this long-term experiment going on in Kenya, right? What's up with that? Kenya is really interesting because of the time frame. Mm -hmm. It's run by this nonprofit, Give Directly. And they're giving cash to people in these villages for 12 years. 12 years? That's serious commitment. Like, we'll see actual generational impact if it does anything. But that's a long time to wait. Any hints yet how it's going? Early data is looking promising. Food security is up. Mental health seems better. Even the local economy in those villages is doing better. So good signs, even if it's early days. But look, let's be real. Anything this big is going to have critics. What are people saying against UBI? The biggest one you always hear is cost. How do you pay for it, right? Critics say you'd need huge tax hikes or you'd have to gut other programs people need. Yeah, can't argue with that. Money's got to come from somewhere. UBI folks, they'll counter and say, look at how much we spend and now W on all these different programs, lots of bureaucracy. Maybe UBI is actually more efficient long term. So it's not just about finding the money, but spending it smarter, maybe, makes sense. But I bet cost isn't the only complaint. Don't some people think if you just give everyone money, they'll just stop working. That's the classic argument, right? No incentive to work if you're getting paid anyway. Seems logical on the surface. But remember, Finland didn't really pan out that way. Most people want to work. It's about more than just money. Maybe UBI lets them take more risks, start businesses, be creative. Things they couldn't do if they were scared to lose their jobs. So it's not laziness, it's opportunity. At least that's the argument. It's a fascinating debate. But even beyond the economics, UBI makes you think about some big picture stuff, you know, what it means to work, what we owe each other. Exactly. It's deeper than just like policy wonk stuff. It's about our values as a society. What kind of world do we want to live in? That's the question, really. And what do we want our relationship with work to be? That's a big part of it, too, right? It's almost like UBI isn't just about changing how our economy works. It's about changing how we think about work altogether and how we relate to each other, even. Yeah, it really makes you think, what if everyone had the security to just pursue what they're passionate about, contribute in ways that, you know, maybe traditional jobs don't even capture? It's a huge question, right? Like, what could we achieve as a society if everyone had that freedom? And it feels even more relevant now with automation and AI changing everything so fast. The source material definitely emphasizes that, how automation just makes this UBI conversation more urgent. If more and more jobs are done by, like, robots, algorithms, how do we make sure everyone benefits, not just the few people who own the robots? Right. It's that whole thing. Technology can either make inequality worse 
or it can be a tool for a better future. It all depends on the choices we make. And that's what I find so fascinating about the UBI debate. It's not just some abstract policy wonk stuff. It gets at our values, what kind of world we actually want. Are we about just surviving economically? Or is there something more? The source material doesn't try to paint some perfect UBI utopia, though. If anything, it leaves you with more questions than answers. Like, is this even realistic? Can we actually create a system like that and have it be fair and make the world better? Or is it just a nice dream? Talk about a cliffhanger ending. I mean, we've covered a lot of ground, the history, the arguments, the experiments, and I feel like we're just scratching the surface here. And that's kind of what's exciting about it. This isn't a done and dusted topic. We're figuring it out as we go along. More research, more experiments. Uh, who knows what we'll learn? Exactly. So where do we go from here? We keep asking the hard questions. We pay attention to those real-world experiments, see what works, what doesn't. And honestly, we keep talking to each other about it because this stuff... The future of work, how we take care of each other, it affects all of us. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, folks, that's our deep dive into universal basic income from its, like, philosophical origins to maybe, possibly, shaping the future we actually live in. It's been quite a journey. If nothing else, I hope this gets everyone thinking a little differently about work, about money, about the kind of world we want to build. Keep questioning, keep learning, and most importantly, keep the conversation going.